All right, now it's time to talk about gas laws. So gas laws are just those correlations that we did the first day of class where we looked at the simulation, compared pressure and volume, volume and temperature, and all the other ones. And so the different laws that we're going to look at here are just dealing with those correlations. So when one goes up, the other one goes down, or when one goes down, the other one goes down as well. Now a lot of students will look at this and they'll say, oh, I've got to memorize all of this stuff. Don't memorize all of the different laws. Think about them logically. It all comes down to really just a few simple facts. And if you know these, and you should know these anyway, coming up with the gas laws is not a problem. And here they are, the two things you need to know to know everything there is to know about gas laws. The mo heat, the mo motion. If you heat something up, it starts moving faster. If you cool it down, it starts moving slower. And then the second one is that pressure is caused by collisions. So anything you can do to increase collisions or increase the power of collisions will also increase the pressure. So just a couple times, you've fallen asleep at night, repeat this little mantra in your head several times, and you'll know your gas law is no problem. Mo heat, mo motion, and pressure is caused by collisions. I would highly recommend muttering it to yourself out loud as you walk through the halls, too. And here is the first gas law. The first gas law is called Boyle's Law, and it's named after Robert Boyle, who essentially compared pressure and volume. So what he found was that they were a indirect correlation, which means that when one goes up, the other one goes down, or when one goes down, the other one goes up. And we can kind of see that from this picture right here. So remember, pressure is caused by collisions, and anything you can do to increase the number of collisions and the force of those collisions is going to increase the pressure. So if we've got a larger volume, like this container right here, we can see those uh, little gas particles. They were pretty far distance that they have to travel in order to collide with the side. So there's a lot more empty space, which means fewer collisions. But if we shrink down the volume, make the container smaller, you can see those gas molecules are now going to have less space to roam, and therefore they're going to have more collisions. So by decreasing the volume, we increase the number of collisions. If we increase the number of collisions, we also increase the pressure. And that's Boyle's Law. The second law is Charles' Law. So Charles is named after Jacques Charles, and what he compared was volume and temperature. And we've already found that to be a direct correlation. So what Jacques Charles found out about gases is that when you heat them up, what do we know about heating up gases? The mo heat, the mo motion. So they start moving around faster, and they're going to expand. So what this law says is that gases expand when they are heated up. Now, when we talk about expansion of gases, we're not talking about those individual gas molecules. So if we have a single gas molecule like that, when we heat it up, it itself does not expand to get bigger. What happens is the space in between the gas molecules expands, so they take up more room. Those molecules themselves don't change. They don't change identity. They don't get bigger. They just start moving faster and therefore spread out more within the container. And so when that happens, they're going to also expand the container. This is why if you leave a bottle of pop or a drink inside of a... Um, hot car during the summer, that gas inside there, it swells, and so the bottle actually feels really tight because it's gotten bigger, it's expanded, it's taking up more volume. The way we also see this is with hot air balloons. So if we think of a hot air balloon, before it's heated up, there's going to be gas in there, and it's going to be the same temperature as the gas on the outside of the balloon, which means there's going to be the same density or the same amount per space, same concentration of gas inside the balloon and outside of the balloon. What happens then is when you heat up the gas inside the balloon, so you put that fire on it from the hot air balloon, the gas will actually expand, which means some of those gas molecules will have to expand out of the container. Since they take up more room and they can't really expand the shape of the balloon, so the volume of the balloon can't get any bigger, the gas spills out of the balloon on the inside. What ends up happening then is we have a lower concentration of gas inside of the balloon, and so a lower density. So that means the gas inside the balloon will weigh less than the gas on the outside, and so it will float to the top. This is the same re reason why a boat floats on top of water, because it's less dense than the water it displaces. A hot air balloon floats because the gas inside of the balloon is less dense than the gas on the outside, and so therefore it will rise above. Helium balloons, the same thing. 
since helium is lighter than air, it's less dense, therefore it floats on top of just atmospheric air. And the last one is Gay-Lussac's Law. This one was created by Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac. He's also the one who wrote up Charles' Law, and it's the first one to publish that, but he gave credit to Jacques Charles, and so therefore it's called Charles' Law. Now, Gay-Lussac's Law takes into account our two tenets of gases, mo-heat, mo-motion, and pressure is directly related to the number and power of collisions. So if we heat up a gas, it's going to start moving faster, it's going to start hitting the sides with more force, and if we move faster, we're increasing the number of collisions, and if we move with more force, we're going to increase the power of those collisions. And what's directly related to the collisions? The pressure. So by increasing the temperature, we increase the motion. By increasing the motion, we increase the power and the number of collisions, which increases pressure. Therefore, pressure and temperature are a direct correlation. When one goes up, the other one goes up. When one, the other one goes down, the next one will go down. So by increasing the temperature or by lowering the temperature, we're going to slow down those gas molecules so they're not going to hit the sides near as hard or with as much force, and therefore the pressure will also go down. Those are the three gas laws. So remembering the names might be the trickiest part, but knowing that pressure and temperature are direct correlation, or pressure and volume are an indirect correlation, should be just as easy as remembering more heat, more motion, and pressure is directly related to collisions.